approach for the township schools to education is a balance between tradition and innovation. We love to honor our past, celebrate the achievements that have shaped our schools, while also eagerly embracing new opportunities for district-wide improvements. These enhance the teaching and learning in our district. The blend ensures that we are not just preserving our heritage, but actively enhancing the educational experience for our students. As we look to the future, maintaining and updating our facilities will remain a priority. It's essential that our schools provide healthy and safe environments for learning. We will remain committed to implementing energy efficient upgrades, enhancing security measures, increasing air quality, and cultivating what it truly means to be Portage proud. Today I want to share with you our district's approach to providing a high quality education to students with a tax rate management plan, absent additional tax requests from our community's taxpayers. First of all, Portage Township Schools is proud to be financially stable. By careful management of tax rates and budgets for necessary updates, PTS has maintained financial stability. This reduces the risk of unexpected, excuse me, unexpected financial burdens on the community and ensures that our schools remain funded without request to increase taxes. This builds community trust. Our transparent financial practices build trust between PTS and the community. When residents and businesses see that their tax dollars are being managed effectively and responsibly, they're more likely to support future initiatives and feel confident in the school's leadership. PTS continues to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our students and community without placing this undue financial burden on taxpayers. And this approach not only strengthens, strengthen, excuse me, strengthens the educational system, but it also reinforces communities' support and engagement. Portage Township Schools continues to make sustainable improvements. A well-structured tax rate management plan allows for us to have sustainable updating of our facilities over time. Rather than waiting for significant funds to accumulate or for emergency repairs, PTS continues to proactively make improvements ensuring that schools remain safe, efficient, and conducive. <coughs> Portage Township Schools prides ourselves in equitable access to education. This management plan allows us to effectively budget so that we allocate resources more equitably across our students and our programs, meaning that all students can benefit from the updated facilities and the opportunities presented to them. The long-term plan, this tax rate management plan that I speak of, it requires long-term planning. Foresight allows us to anticipate future needs and budget accordingly, <coughs> ensuring that they we, excuse me, can invest in innovations and improvements without causing a financial strain. Our updated facilities continue to contribute to a better learning environment. Modern classrooms, improved HVAC systems, upgraded security measures, all enhance students' educational experiences and their <coughs> overall well-being is taken into account. This ultimately leads to better academic outcomes. So why is a tax rate management plan so important for Portage Township Schools and the community? It's because we know Portage Proud is not just a phrase. It is a rallying cry for excellence, community spirit, and a shared vision of the future. Together, we can continue to celebrate our history and embrace our traditions while also enhancing the entire educational experience for PTS students through strategic planning that makes Portage Township Schools a place we can be proud of for decades to come. I do have some slides I'd like to share with you. that state why it's important to have up 
updated and modernized learning facilities for our students. There it goes. So it enhances engagement. Modern flexible spaces for students to learn increases the ability to collaborate. It improves, it improves accessibility and accommodates diverse learning needs so that all students, no matter their abilities, can participate fully. Also, collaborative learning. It's flexible. There's breakout areas. Teamwork and communication are truly at the forefront. Students are better focused. It reduces distractions. The comfortable environment. We have increased natural lighting and upgraded lighting. We have temperature control through our new HVAC systems and furniture that, collab that allows collaborative learning to take place in a conducive environment. Increased teacher effectiveness. Our teachers can modernize their instructional strategies as the spaces become much more flexible. Community building, a sense of belonging, sustainability, energy efficient, environmental awareness, and future ready. Flexible spaces where those new teaching methods and curricular changes can be adapted very easily in the longevity of our planning. So the tax rate management plan that I spoke about, this is intended to improve our learning environments and also upgrade those environments specifically as good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. We continue to keep a debt, debt service tax rate under 40 cents and our total tax rate under 90 cents. Both of these combined are amongst the strongest in the school districts across the state. We have an extremely low tax rate when considering others. We maintain a very positive A plus rating with S&P Global ratings to retain low interest rates for our projects. I just want to mention these last two bullet points in particular. Since 2018 to 2022 alone, Portage has used $32.6 million in bond sales and over $40 million since 2018 with bond sales, grants, rainy day fund, and operation fund budgets. Again, this $40 million did not come to the taxpayers to increase taxes. So our historical tax rate in Portage, I think this is also showing that perspective, uh, our perspective on the importance of balance. As a community, our community deserves to see that we're utilizing your dollars to the best of our ability to increase outcomes for students in a supportive manner. And so when you look at this tax rate history, again, Portage Township Schools being amongst one of the lowest in the state, we are still seeing a small decline in the tax rate. However, we're maintaining that revenue level by just managing as some debt is coming off. I'm not gonna read all of these to you, but I just wanna share a few items in particular. You'll see that there's the district-wide chiller project, um, amongst other things that took place, uh, secure doors and entryways upgrades, mechanical and plumbing upgrades, LED lighting, roofing replacements, district-wide media center improvements, and the update to Portage High School's exterior with repair and improvements overall. You'll also see that we've got the technology upgrades that have occurred, exterior lighting, sidewalk enhancements, elementary flooring, security and HVAC automation for, throughout the buildings. And this is not to say that every building so far has had all of these opportunities. We are building this as that debt falls off. We did complete the district-wide elementary lighting project, as well as some athletic upgrades um, that are to come. And I will share with you that our varsity baseball and softball fields will be um, receiving artificial turf. And so we are currently in the process of finalizing that bid package to go out to bid here, um, probably in November. So planning for the future, there's a hope of possibly a new middle school in Portage. 
Bingley ring renovations with HVAC and a cavatorium. HVAC upgrades at the remaining elementary schools, Meyer, Southgate, and Jones and Kyle. Jones is this coming summer. Early learning opportunities before kindergarten. A boiler replacement project throughout the district, window replacement throughout our elementaries, um, tennis courts resurfaced, lab upgrades for science and culinary and our life skills students. Again, not even reading all of those to you, but through this fiscal management, tax rate management plan. So we know the proof is seeing what we're doing with those dollars. So this is, um, this slide here is the district-wide media center upgrades. You will see uh, a lot of the things I spoke about, about the importance of how the learning environment truly comes together. The LED lighting, uh, the flooring replacement, the furniture being flexible, allows for a lot of different opportunities for our students to come together and collaborate. Just the same, um, we have engaged with Port County Public Library System and their team to genre by our libraries instead of that Dewey Decimal System. It's more like you're going into Barnes and Nobles now. You go into that section that you're interested in, whatever that genre is. We also learned about spine fear, um, the, the spine of a book. So now a lot of our elementary uh, primary students there are sections you can't really see, but in the third picture on the top, those bins kind of remind me of a record store where you flip through and you see the face of the book, the cover. So analyzing what it takes to increase students' engagement and with purposeful planning, again, we were able to do this district-wide. The next slide here is um, the beloved Lavenda Learning Lab named after a wonderful Portage educator, Terry Lavenda. You can see here, um, I will tell you where they are standing in the bottom center picture was the West Pool. So this came from Dr. Stevens and I working uh, to really try to vision what this space could become. And it's actually in-house field trips for our elementary students to come and complete STEM and STEAM activities. They come about four times a year per group. Um, you'll also see in the bottom corner there on the left side, um, that's an art show, high school, or sorry, a, a district art show that was taking place. Um, and then we've also had professional development. That far right picture is um, our summit for the Portage Exchange Club uh, to prevent child abuse. Um, so that was with community partners, and we had about 70 uh, agents, 70 individuals representing various agencies throughout the region. The pool renovation, the East Pool. Um, we kept that same cavity and we were able to do so much with that. Um, and I want to share that my favorite highlight of this, and so whenever I get a chance to talk about it, I really wanted windows in this facility. If you've been there previous, there, there was no like natural lighting. So it's a, a beautiful space. The natural lighting really adds a lot to it. Um, and it's kind of nice too when you're out at the, the athletic stadium at the high school, looking back that direction where it was, you know, just the big brick right there. Um, now you, you see those lights coming through the windows. District flooring improvements. So all of our gymnasiums at the elementary level received new flooring. Um, if you remember when that rent renovation or actually addition came, I was actually in fourth or fifth grade at Jones and it was carpet. So the carpet has since been removed um, and you can see the, the gorgeous floor that went in and that is at every school. Um, you see the hallways that have the replacement flooring, cafeteria, and also the classrooms. You'll notice that we're very specific about what it means with Portage Pride that we have that constant color. What we are as Portage should be represented in every learning space. So again, it brings that sense of belonging. I belong here, whether I'm a student at Jones, whether I'm a student at Bagley, whether I go to the high school. We want our kids to be familiar with what it means to be Portage. West renovation, um, this wasn't even included in the almost 40 million. 
This project cost $7.6 million, and this occurred in like the 2016-2017. This was the first piece of paper I was handed when I became superintendent, and it was literally a piece of paper. Um, and I said to me, like, where's the rest of the drawings? There weren't any. So it was a great opportunity to really dig in right away. Um, you'll see in the top there on the left, the floor was just simply um, polished, that concrete look, that idea of it being industrial, that's one of our maker spaces in the making. Those windows did not exist. Again, adding that natural light was really important for us. So that bottom picture, you'll see where those are all windows that were put in. Um, just specifically to add that natural light. The collaboration space for teachers, um, just having that exposed ductwork, uh, again, industrial, but also air quality improvements. So these are some of the things that, you know, they may not be as fun to look at, but the importance of them is significant. The HVAC improvements across the district have continued. So very proud of the various things that have occurred. As I shared with you, the elementaries that remain will also be updating that, um, as I shared in the coming years with the Fagley update um, and working on Jones this summer. But if you recall in school how there's that unit vent that goes across the bottom of the windows for that airflow coming in from the outside and keeping fresh air in our schools, it's great if you're sitting by that in the winter. It's terrible if you're sitting by that in the summer, you're gonna freeze. Uh, just the same, it's very loud. So I always talked about as a teacher that when I was teaching elementary at Myers, I would be screaming at 2.30 and then that thing would go off and we all kind of went, oh. But you know, it really was, it was a significant amount of noise. But the air doesn't distribute across the classroom. So now through this process of updating the HVAC system, there is now ventilation that comes and extends through the ceiling across the classroom. So there's an equal distribution of that quality airflow. So we're really proud of that. Um, and through that also came all those flooring up upgrades. So Central um, and Sailor just received their flooring because the year previous they had received the HVAC improvements. Um, Christmas is, is in the process of some flooring things. It's, one of the pictures of the hallway was Christman Hallway, um, and they did also get their new HVAC this summer that we just concluded. Some digital improvements. I had shared with you that we had increased the technology for teachers in the classroom and our students. And what I love is that when you look at these different things, there's a lot of things that you'll notice here. Um, you'll notice that we have a lot of common furniture, um, flexible furniture that can go and move around to the different building events we need. Um, it just makes sense to have those things in common, but also specific to um, the high needs of kids at those various levels. You'll also see again that, that very uh, distinct red, and then um, those are new line panels. We have them in every single classroom across the district, and we also, as you can see here, have various ones on carts so that they can be utilized in different spaces. The painting projects, again, you'll see another floor here, um, but also you'll see the hallway up at top that's Aylesworth, and down below there is Fagley. So you can see there's some variations on how the paint can be presented as far as those stripes. So there could be a little bit of identity there, but ultimately still that overall identity of Portage Pride. So some athletic improvements. Um, I think a lot of you are aware of the Jumbotron. Um, there's a picture of it getting installed at the bottom. At the top is the current senior class for their senior sunrise. They are pictured there right in front of it um, with our gorgeous turf there. And then on that far right, you'll see where those two fields, the varsity softball and varsity baseball, that is the um, athletic site improvements for baseball and softball. I do want to specifically mention though that I learned, I learned a lot outside of like just the educational things. So when we started talking turf, I believe it's that a baseball field is approximately two and a half times the amount of turf that a um, football field is. And I just did not know that because of the outfield. And so you'll see where that design is on the outfield and that is specifically to have a multi-purpose space for our students.
that we can have our marching band out on this turf, we can have soccer out on this turf practicing. So it really enhances our ability to have competition size um, spaces for this multi-purpose field so that it's not just solely um, a field for baseball. I just want to thank you for allowing me the time today. I hope you can see uh, the forward movement that we're making. Again, our goal is to always work collaborative, collaboratively with our taxpayers, business community, and residents as well. And our goal is to live within our means. These projects mean a lot to us because we put the work in to make sure that these projects were funded without asking taxpayers for additional dollars. And I really want to also share that um, the project that we are planning for, um, that bond, if that were something that the board does decide to move forward with, that's over a $95 million bond. And again, building a new middle school will not be an ask of the taxpayers for more dollars. It's something for all of us to be proud of. The fiscal management of this school board, the long-term fiscal management of this board has been a real, real blessing to my team and I, and we've just tried to do what we can to continue that path forward. So I want to thank you so much for having me today. I want to thank my three school board members who are here, President Maletta, Vice President Vesquez, and member Lori Wilkie in the back. Um, I can't thank my team enough, but really the community support, it means so much. Thank you for going along this ride. I believe this is year eight and we're just getting started. Thank you.